we're going to pick back up with this landscape drawing here and develop it as uh, far as we need to. Right now, I think we need a, uh, you know, I think we need a tighter uh, and more reasonable sketch here for the line work. Um, so let's work on that. I think I'm also going to have to um, get a bigger reference here. And open that up. So I open up a second copy of this and then put it on my other screen so I can see more of what's going on a little more clearly. And so you can see sort of the, the thumbnail and how I'm working on that. So this shape that I have here is actually you know, a couple, of, there's a couple of things going on. So here there's a rock here and that's coming up. There's a little cut back in the rock there. Go here. There's some detail in the rock that we can forget here. This actually, this bit of boulder ends here, and then this is actually another one behind here. Okay, so we've got that. And we can use a little bit of line weight to s and some darkness to pull this up and together. Um, then working into the foreground still, there's um, there's actually a rock that's sort of peeking out there in the reference, and I want to bring that more forward, and then bring another rock back here, and then there's this large rock here. That's doing some interesting stuff. It's going to have some interesting shapes by the time we're done with it. There's this rock that's kind of coming out in front of that, coming down, ending about there. And when you do this, this is sort of like the second pass line drawing. Um, you want to be sure to just take note of what you didn't notice on your first pass. And you can add more details if you need to. You can simplify things down, eliminate things. You shouldn't feel like you're stuck copying the photo because that's really boring. Um, it can be very effective if you're doing a, a photorealistic thing. But, you know. It can also be kind of um, maddening and, you know, just monotonous. Because in some sense, it's like, well, why just copy a photo? You need to add your own thing to it. Even photorealists are always, you know, adding stuff to it. So here I've got this second layer going on. I'm bringing more complexity to it. Making some changes, continually reobserving. Right, making sure that things kind of remain in the ballpark. And remain fairly realistic. There we go. Um, then I can go back into the background too and keep working some of these details out and make sure that they're you know look they look like rocks and mountainous areas in the background.
Okay. Now, there's another theory that I forgot to mention, and this is a good side note, is that um, when you're drawing landscapes, thinking about foreground, middle ground, background, it's like drawing boxes. So a good foreground box would be a three-sided box. You know, a good middle ground one would be like a two-sided box, right? Say it's a building. Say this is like a trash can in a building. And then your cityscape would be your one-sided box behind it, you know, with a bunch of like skyscrapers and stuff, right? So we can take this, you know, idea and apply it into landscaping um, pretty quickly and easily. So what we do is we spend the most time developing detail in the foreground and lighting and form, right? And then in the middle ground, we simplify it down a little bit. And then the background is just basically more or less of a solid shape. Now, when we're doing rock texture, this, the area to focus for texture is the area that we focused on when we're doing trees, right? This area where you separate light and dark. Um, because that's where we see the most texture. If we, if we were to pull this photo down and zoom into it, which I'll do in a minute after I'm, after I kind of get through some of this light and dark division stuff. you'll see that there's a lot of texture on that transition. Okay, so this is a great example. We're gonna zoom way in. Okay, so here, right, you can't see much value differentiation, especially if you squint at it. If we go up here, you can't see much value differentiation, but our highest degree of contrast is areas right here, right? And this is you know, in this area, say. There's a lot of contrast in that area. Okay. Just wanted to draw your attention to that. So when we're doing textures, we pay attention to those areas mostly. So now when we're ready, I'm just going to keep adding layers. We can go ahead and just very softly put tone down here. And um, you know, I like to go in kind of the direction the form is going with tone. You don't have to, but I think it helps. Since I'm working digitally, I'm just going to go like a larger brush here and speed things up for us. Just so I kind of cover up the, the white of the paper here. I want to be sure to kind of get right up to the edges if I can. So I don't leave any little gaps because the gaps are, will kind of wind up being uh, a little bit frustrating. Okay, so here I can come down, I can separate light and dark here a little bit better. And then this is almost going to be all dark here, except for like a teeny little bit right at the top there. So then we're coming in. and soft shadows. See, so this is still the foreground, right? Even though we're on kind of like layer two of the foreground. And I don't need to differentiate the um, areas of value very much. 
yet. Because drawing is exploratory, I don't have to go right to the exact value at, right off the bat. I'm still kind of searching for what this could be, you know? And I can zoom out and be sure that my thumbnail is kind of coming across. And I think that it is. Um, and this segment especially, there's a lot of um, brush here. So I can actually include that if I want. And throw that in. sure that I'm hanging on to some of these shapes pretty carefully. All right. So that's pretty good like early development of the uh, of the foreground. Okay. Then let's um, develop the middle ground. Um, so the middle ground, I'm actually going to switch and do like a lighter value thing entirely. This is um, almost all going to be just one dark shape or one tone shape, one middle value tone shape. And actually what I might do is do like two middle value tones. Not sure. Sometimes, like, you need, you don't need much in the middle ground. Sometimes you do. If you have a really strong silhouette, you know, really good sense of this uh, overlapping shape concept then you have to do less work. If the shapes aren't really clear, then you have to do more rendering and that just becomes very time consuming. I'm not big on rendering. You know, this isn't rendering at all. This is just dividing areas with different values. Rendering is way more time consuming. Okay, so now I have a differentiation for the uh, foreground and middle ground. And I think I'm gonna go back into the into the foreground some, and be sure that I've like got enough value in here. Because there's these just little pops of light that come up, um, and a lot of this is actually in shadow. So I need to come in and uh, just very softly like. Put this shadow, put these shadows in here. So now we get a more, a better feel for the foreground. Okay. Now the background, in some ways, is going to be our easiest thing to do. Um, we're going to get a very light tone back here. And I think we're going to get a, um, we're going to do a slightly darker tone sort of between these two swatches, maybe like here. And that'll go right here. We need, you know, in the photo, in our reference, we can see all kinds of detail here. But that's kind of um, counterproductive for what we want to do in the drawing, because this needs to sit back and be simple. And if it's complicated and has a lot of detail, it's not going to do that. 
So this area's job is to go back in space. And if we start you know, doing two and three sides and getting all this texture, it's going to want to come forward. And so it's not going to do its job. Okay. All right, there we have it. Now what's happening is the middle ground value and the and the foreground values, they're kind of uh, pulling a little close together. So we need to come back in with our foreground values and be sure that they're very much differentiated enough. And uh, we're going to start that differentiation again at the um, areas where there's uh, a lot of textural difference right here because this is our highest level of contrast and that's where we're going to focus our, our time in terms of dividing light and dark. And we can even do things like um, from the top layer we can come in here and we can either with an eraser well with an eraser if you're drawing with pencil but here we can use different swatches even and paint over stuff which will cause problems later probably, but it's all right for this particular purpose. And then here, this is where you slow down, actually. So you don't want to go too quickly through this part. Um, this is kind of where you begin to um, really define what all is going on with this thing. And then this again isn't really rendering, right? I'm not following light, I'm just working shapes basically. And I can do like little floating dots of texture here, and I can switch to the sort of eraser area and do um, little dots of texture in here in the opposite direction. And that can kind of um, help the transition happen. But ideally what I want to do is think in like little small shapes rather than dotting. And just keep working through. Keep being very specific about these shapes, but simplifying them down. Eliminating detail when needed. Reobserving and adding more stuff if I need to. And then I may need to come in and start darkening up this whole area. I'm still kind of far away from black. Because I don't want to get to where I'm like just putting blacks everywhere. Um, that's a different style than we want to do. But you can. It's an option. It's very um, comic book like to do that. But here I want to leave room so that this has a distinctly darker value than the middle ground. But then I want to leave room so that when we do line work at the end, the line work has its time to shine too, right? And then I can, you know, kind of my last step is to decide how I want to finish it and what, I need, what it needs to look like at the finish, right? here, come down, 
bumping this value down some. Making sure that we cover a lot of area here. Make sure we don't leave any like unneeded white spaces. Take time to do this. This is one of those things where you're filling in paper and it like it seems boring and time consuming. Um, but it's necessary to get a good fill here because if you don't fill this well, then you're creating texture. Um, and then that texture is going to fight your intentional textures that you put in, especially in, the, in these foreground areas. Okay, so now we zoom out and we do a little test and say, okay, now I've got a very clear light pattern. It's starting to look like light on this on this upper right rock. I have clear value dis distinctions between foreground, middle ground, background, and it's starting to, to come together a little bit. You know, I have more work to do. Like I can come in and add more differentiation here and like push for more clarity within these transitions here and get them to look more like actual light. So simple and specific is kind of the name of the game with this. You're simplifying down, you're eliminating details, but you're being very specific as you do it, right? You're being very clear about these shapes. Alright, zooming out again. We're getting there, right? The bottom left corner is a little unclear, so here I probably need to work on this rock here some and get some of this like texture filled filled in here so it's clear that it is a rock. And then I probably need to go in like if I were um, drawing in these uh, with pencil. I would actually get the eraser out, um, sharpen it up so it's very like got a good point on it and then erase in here and then I would very carefully kind of draw in between if I needed to still. So this should look a little bit like grasses when we're done here. Sort of a funky approach It's more clear. I still don't. I'm still not completely happy with it. I think I'd want to just come back and pick a few choice grass pieces to to really emphasize here with some line. All right, now I need to decide on what this is going to look like, how I want to finish this, okay? Um, now, here's one option. If you don't have a lot of time, uh, like you're sketching, uh, basically this can be done as a sketch. But for a finished drawing, we want to go a little further. We want to really get um, some, some quality stuff done here. So what you could do is start going in and using the line work to differentiate some of the major shapes. What you don't want to do is use the exact same line over everything because that can get just as monotonous and just as bad as leaving it undone. 
if you notice anything you haven't touched yet, like you missed a shape like that, then you might want to come back. And what I focus on here again, name of the game, overlap, simplify, right? And just keep working it. Make sure I'm very clear about what's overlapping what. Because that can get lost in this process too. And you don't want to lose that for sure. So this is also there's a couple of things like people, a couple of terms for this. I like this one term that one of my teachers used, they called this binding. And what this is doing is going through and you're kind of clearly developing those forms. So now, I mean, this could be kind of done-ish, right? We could call this good if we wanted to because we've achieved all of our objectives in the landscape. But we could also continue to work and take this further. Maybe we want to like zoom in on a particular area and start to clean it up and make it look decent. Um, and what we could do is again work this like work this shadow core idea. So we could come in here and we could start in on um, just like cleaning up some of these lights and darks. start working back and forth to get a good shadow core to happen. And see what this looks like when we zoom out, right? So that has a whole different level of finish. And now what we'd have to do is, is we'd have to start coming into this foreground area and start bringing that up to finish too. Start being more clear about what's going on and cleaning up some of these areas where there's a lot of these uh, sketchy lines. And we don't have to completely remove them. Like I don't want you just sitting there erasing instead of drawing. But any ones that really don't relate or are hurting the actual piece, then I think you should remove those. We can start to push this core value down a little bit if we want. Okay, there we go. See, that's really kind of reaching for extra here. So we're seeing a different level of finish begin to happen. So sometimes when you're at this point and you're happy with it, sometimes you just have to focus in on one particular area and start saying, okay, what's this gonna look like in the end? Is this what I want it to be? And try out like uh, a style of finish that you want. You can start thinking about that even in beginning drawing, I think. I 
and I keep like zooming out because when you're um, when you're drawing physically you have this ability to just kind of step back from the drawing and look at it from a distance which you should always do and so we zoom out when we're working digitally So this is kind of a cache shadow here, so maybe I can push this one down some. See how this is kind of making this pop into dimension now? That's getting interesting, I think. Because it is kind of this big, odd shape that's blocking everything, which is kind of fun. So I kind of have to like, I kind of have to run with that here. Then down here, there's actually a lot of dark here, so. I think what I might need to do is just try that out here and see what this looks like as well. See what a fairly dark value here does for it. I think that's going to pop this out in a good way. Allow things to kind of fade some. There's actually like a little bit under here as well. I've seen through some of these bits of grasses. All right, zooming out. I think that's working pretty well. Um, it needs a better transition here. They're also serving to differentiate these two areas of the foreground. There. Cool. So that's more of a finish. So what I need to do now is go into the middle ground, um, which was this layer here, and begin to um, bump up some of the, or push down some of the shadows so that we're kind of um, getting that two-sided rock feel that we did before. I can do that without line. I can do it just with the, just with the tone and following some of the rock shapes in the reference here. So I think I have a more clear middle ground now, and it's kind of doing what it needs to do. Um, then, sort of for bonus things, what I would do is create like a fade in the sky and on the ground. So the ground is like sort of dark, um, not middle ground dark. So what I want to do is just like go from dark to light for the ground kind of like that just brush it lightly and then for the sky I'd go pretty light and here I think I need to go at a diagonal and go kind of dark up here into light down here I may need to go just a little darker with that just so it shows up, so it builds the sense of light. So 
We always need some value in the sky to make it look really like a sky, like it's going away. And then, um, which layer is that on? The sketch layer is a bit dark, I think, back there. Um, but that's okay. So this maybe isn't done, and you could take it to finish from here. But this gives you a good idea of the process that you go through to get there. I think. Um, so I'm going to stop here and call it good on this demo. And remember that you're mostly working foreground, middle ground, background, dark, medium, and light. And then the additional concept that we did is the sort of three-sided foreground, two-sided middle ground, and, and flat shape, one-sided background. Okay. And you can see that at work here.